In this video we're going to discuss an experimental way to determine the absolute entropy of a given substance at a certain temperature and as a function of temperature. So what we're going to use is called calorimetry and calorimetry is just the measurement of heat transfer during a process. Could be a physical process, could be a chemical process, doesn't matter. All that matters is you have an experimental setup where you can measure the variables of state of interest and you can measure the heat that is flowing into or out of the system as you're keeping track of those state variables. So let's remind ourselves we have the constant pressure heat capacities, the partial derivative of enthalpy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. And when you have a constant pressure process, as most chemical processes are, then the heat which occurs during that process is equal to the entr is equal to the enthalpy. So the der the derivative or the differential of heat is equal to the differential of enthalpy. So if we have some type of calorimeter, then we can measure um, the heat that's going into the system. Uh, and the change in temperature so we can get the constant pressure heat capacity for any given value of temperature and we can also during phase transitions measure the amount of heat that went into that phase transition and that gives us the enthalpy of transition for that as well so if we do if we measure very carefully at a wide variety of temperatures we can build ourselves a curve of the constant pressure heat capacity and we can determine the transition enthalpy for uh, the substances during all phase transitions as well. So let's remind ourselves that during uh, any heating or cooling of a substance from T1 to T2, the change in entropy during that process is the constant pressure heat capacity divided by T, integrated with respect to T, and that's if it's between transitions. And during a transition, the transition entropy change is the transition enthalpy change divided by the temperature of that transition. Okay, so we got through that mouthful. So let's make a plot here where we can measure um, heat capacity over, over different values of temperature. But not only do we want heat capacity as a, as a function of temperature, we want that divided by T because this is the function that we need to integrate in order to get our entropy change uh, between given temperatures and also to find uh, absolute values of that entropy. And also remember from the third law of thermodynamics that S at zero Kelvin is zero for a perfect crystal. Okay, so we have the Debye T cube law is going to say that this is going to be approaches zero as entropy as the temperature approaches zero. So let me get T going up on this axis. So CP uh, divided by T is going to be approximately T squared. So you're going to get a parabola starting out here. And then that's going to go up and it's going to approach some finite value and then Maybe it starts increasing, maybe it starts decreasing, who knows, but this is just for demonstration. So let's say we have some function of temperature like this. Okay, so we have this, so we wanna integrate this from a given temperature up to our temperature to determine the absolute entropy. So what you can do is kind of numerically integrate this curve if you have CP at a bunch of different temperatures. So you might do some type of integration technique. One thing you could do is things like Riemann sums. Basically turn this curve into a bunch of the area under this curve into a bunch of rectangles and add the area of those rectangles. There are plenty of more sophisticated numerical methods for integrating uh, sets of data like this. But, but you see the point. The point is that the area under this curve is going to be the entropy at a given temperature. So if we have if we want to have the entropy at the entropy at this given T here, when we call that T prime, then the entropy of that temperature is the area under this curve all the way up to T prime. That would be the integral of C P over T from zero up to T prime. Okay. And another quantity of interest that we want to introduce we have the molar entropy 
S bar, just like E bar is just the entropy divided by the number of moles present. So it's just S of T for a substance divided by its number of moles. And as we said, S bar of T is just called the molar entropy. The entropy which is present in one mole of that substance at that temperature. Okay, so we have this numerical integration there. So if we do this numerical integration and we know how many moles uh, this heat capacity was, who knows, maybe this is also the molar heat capacity. Then that, and we also measured it during transitions as well, what the heat was during phase transitions. Then we can build a curve of the entropy as a function of temperature. So we are gonna plot here the molar entropy, S bar of T, going up there, as a function of T, going up on the x-axis. So we know from the third law that that starts at zero. So we're gonna start our curve down at uh, T equals zero at S equals zero. And then that's gonna go up cubically starting out then it's gonna get pretty consistent whenever you get to a fairly constant heat capacity like we have there. Then we'll reach a temperature where we have the melting point and there'll be some entropy increase going from the solid to the liquid. There's more disorder in the liquid. The liquid is more free to move around. The atoms can move around in their positions relative to each other better. So it makes sense that the entropy goes up from, during a melting process. And then you have the entropy of the liquid going up as it heats up, moving particles moving faster and faster, getting more disordered, more randomly located in space and in their orientation. Then you go from uh, the liquid to the gas during vaporization, and going from the liquid to the gas is an even greater increase in the entropy of that phase transition. That's a large increase because gas molecules will take the shape of whatever volume container that they're in. There's much, much more disorder in gas molecules than there are in liquid, because the liquid generally tends to stay associated with itself as well. And then after that, the entropy goes up and it'll start tailing off its increases as you get to higher and higher temperatures. So if we mark this on here, we have this temperature here, and this temperature is the temperature of fusion. And this temperature here is the temperature of vaporization or of boiling. And if we mark some more things on here, this increase here during this vertical section, that is the entropy change of vaporization. And this entropy change here during the melting process, that is the entropy of fusion or the entropy of melting. Okay, so if we have this value here, this whole curve as a function of temperature here, let's say that this temperature here is 298.15 Kelvin. So let's say at 298.15 Kelvin, this substance here is a gas. So we have heated up, we melted, we heated up, we evaporated, and now we are a gas here at 298 Kelvin. This value up here at 298 Kelvin, this is what is called the standard molar entropy. So it has, just like the standard uh, molar enthalpy, the standard molar entropy is S bar, and it's got this little circle up here as a superscript on the right. So this quantity where we have S bar not there. As we said, this is the standard molar entropy. The unit of standard molar entropy, just like the unit of molar entropy, the SI unit would be joules per mole Kelvin for that unit and this would include the entropy at 298.15 Kelvin 
And if you are a gas at 298.15 Kelvin, which is uh, which is also 25 degrees Celsius, in case we forget there, this also includes a correction if the gas has any non-ideality to it. So if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't perfectly obey the ideal gas law, as most gases don't, they obey it approximately at standard conditions, but um, there is there is some discrepancy for pretty much every gas. So this includes a correction for any non-ideal behavior of that gas as well. And that's at 298.15 Kelvin. So this standard entropy uh, combined with that standard enthalpy will come in handy to very much in handy to us in a little bit down the road, but I want to introduce that concept now so that we've seen um, not only molar entropy and we see what entropy looks like as a function of temperature and through various phase transitions and phases. This being here, solid, liquid, gas. Not only that we get a picture of it here, but we also see this concept of standard molar entropy and how this is going to be useful for us in uh, chemical reactions later as well.